Hi, this is Nicole Dyer, and for today's Research Like a Pro question and answer video, Diana is going to be talking about her locality guide for a burned county in Arkansas. So this is an example of how you can create a locality guide even when there aren't a lot of records remaining. So this is an excerpt from one of our office hours sessions in the Research Like a Pro e-course, and so I hope you enjoy this tip from office hours. So I thought for fun today, I would take you through my latest project when I did a locality guide. And this was an interesting one because it's a severely burned county in Izzard County. And so, you know, sometimes when you have a severely burned county, you don't have a lot of records that you can put in specifically for the time that you are trying to research. And so you'll see that I did a couple of things here. I have found over the years that I'd like to know when I created the guide because maybe new things have been added. So I started putting a date. And then I've also started doing this, what the guide covers. And you'll see this was a really narrow window of time, but that's just because that's when the people I was researching lived there. And I didn't want to do a guide and cover all the records that began in 1889 when the courthouse you know after the fire and the new records started being kept because those wouldn't apply and so I just noted right up front that that's what it covers 1825 to 1850 and you know if I ever need to do research in Izzard County in the 1900s I'll have a lot more things to add but for right now I know that's that's what I've got so the other fun thing that I did and this was thanks to Nicole she uh, had started putting emojis. And so I put icons, but it's actually called emojis in Google Docs. And so if you if you like the look of that and if you need something fun to do with your with your day, you can go add emojis. And you just go up to the top left and it's insert emoji. And then you can type in a little search. So I would either put in book or computer and then it brings up the emoji. And they have different colors. You know, like they have the three colors for books and maybe even more. And you can select whatever you want and put that into your guide. And so I would just create it and then copy and paste it into all the, the relevant places. So I use green because it's a book in my collection. I can just get it out and look at. Red for book at the Family History Library. I'll have to change that now to Family Search Library. If you guys all heard the news, we're changing the name because I have to go there to get it. And then if it's blue, I put digitize because I can access it and then digitize record collection. And maybe you'd even have some more things that you'd want to put in there. But I thought that was kind of fun so I could see at a glance what I have. And then for this one, for my guides, I always do a really nice set of links, to other online research guides. And one tip that you can do is if you already have these created for another guide, you know, they're kind of the basics, right? There's the wiki and the catalog, you know, random acts of genealogical kindness, Cindy's list. If you have all those basics, you could just copy those in and then just go find the appropriate county. But, you know, if you kind of need a reminder of all the different places that you like to link to, you could do something like that. And then I also did this. So I have an Arkansas State Locality Guide that's really robust because I did it for accreditation. And so I didn't need to put in some of the things that are mentioned in that. And so I just gave myself a note and a link to that guide on Google Drive so that it reminds me I've got that guide and I can go to it. So it can be helpful to link to your other guides you have on different jurisdictions. And then if you are copying in some information, like this is um, from the Family Search Wiki, I always copy in their little table. Just make sure you know where you got it from. You know, like I noted, it's the chart from the wiki. And sometimes I'll do a full citation or a link, you know, just make sure you know where that came from so that you can cite it if you are writing your report. And then I did some maps and one idea that I had that was fun or just happened to be for this project, you know, of course we can find maps online, but I had uh, done some research up at the Family Search Library and in some books and they had some really great maps in the books. And so I did, I had done a PDF so I could bring home, you know, the information from the book that I wanted. And so I just did a screenshot of some of the maps from the book and put in my guide because it was 
really specific and sometimes you can't find these types of maps online. Sometimes you can, but for this one, I didn't know if I could. And so, you know, if you have a book or something, you could take a picture of a map. You just want to make sure you have your citation so you know exactly where it came from. And then here's an example of my little icons. So green means I have it in my collection. And I've talked before about the Ozark books by Brooks Blevins. And it's fun that I have this because today I just probably started reading volume two. I'm super excited about that, which cover, covers the Civil War era. And his books are so great. But I did a little summary. And I think that's really helpful when you have a book. If you're like me, you may just forget what was in that book that was so great and that you know was so helpful. But I decided to to put at least the chapters in here so I would remember what it had and what I could go get out of it. So if you have some books in your own collection that could go into your guide, or even if it's a book that you've uh, read from the library, or even if it's a book that you've used digi digitally, it might be helpful to do a little bit of summary. You know, sometimes we think we'll remember everything and often we don't. So when I was putting in, this should be law here, the picture cut off a little bit. For law and government in my Arkansas state guide, I already had all of these laws. And so it was really easy just to copy and paste those straight from, from that guide. And so that's another tip is you can copy and paste or you can have the link. Mm -hmm. I decided I wanted to have them just at my fingertips because I thought I probably would need them. And you'll see that they're kind of in the era that I wanted, that 1819 to 1835. And so I put those in, plus a link to Judy's blog just for Izzard County. So I like to always go see if she's written anything about the laws on her blog post, the legal genealogy on her blog, and then put links to that in my guide for the laws. I think this is one of the trickiest things to find are the laws. And so once we found them, we want to make sure we really have those somewhere where we can use them. And then finally, as I told you, it was in Burn County, literally no land. No, there were tax. There's, there's one source for tax. Uh, no probate, no court records, no marriage records, just a severely burned county. But there were newspapers that were in the area. And so I put those in. Some of them are a little bit later, but some of them were in the era that maybe could be helpful. And so I did a pretty robust section on the newspapers because that was an existing record that could help me. So I did a lot on the history of the area, the laws, the newspapers, uh, trying just to get everything that I could about this county, even though I didn't have good records. So anyway, I just thought I would give a, just show you a little bit about how I put together my latest locality guide. 